أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على نبينا الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. As chairman has mentioned, my topic is global sickness and possible remedy from the Risara Nur's perspective. Generally, when we look at the the wall, if I may say, is in chaos, so to say. It has some kind of problems, if I may mention. Um, the reason may not be disconnected with the fact that human are created to serve Allah, one, and uh, Muslims in particular, kuntum khaira ummatin ukurijad linas ta'amuruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhawna anil munkar. The al-amru bil ma'aruf wa nahi anil munkar is like so to say, thrown at the side. It is not being practiced in a proper manner. So we left the teachings of the Quran behind and we are practicing something else. So the deviation, we've deviated from the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's like the worth of Allah is on us. So we have to see the result of what we have done. And it's not on us as Muslims alone, it's like affecting everyone. Because we are supposed to be uh, example. We have to show example. We have to follow the footsteps of the, of the Prophet وسلم, in certain a way of life. The way the Prophet has uh, touched the companions and the way they set their way of life and how they were able to uh, establish a uh, vast civilization, if I may say extending from the African, Asian, and part of Europe, even Turkey is like part of it, as we can witness nowadays. So as a result of that, we have uh, hunger all over the world. There is poverty, uh, social injustice, oppression, war, enforced migration, anarchy, violence, terrorism, and the terrorism in terrorism, because when you say terrorism, it is, I'm asking myself, what is the definition of terrorism? If I can be asked, I, if I can, just like the example Prof. Colin has given, that someone killed about 50 number of people and he's not called a terrorist. Why am I as a Muslim be called a terrorist? That means the person calling me a terrorist is also terrorizing me. I may call him also a terrorist. That means the entire globe is a wall of terrorists. Then we have to look at this terrorism, redefine it and look at it. How do we redefine terrorism? How are we going to tackle this kind of a problem? Zahar al fasad fil barri wal bahar bima kasab al We are the cause of all this kind of, uh, all this kind of uh, problems. Okay, the sickness that we have, if I may say, according to uh, Badiou Zaman said Nursi, that is um, that the whole globe, to so to say, is suffering from is as a result of what we are doing. The mischief has appeared that is Zahar al Fasad, Phil Bari Wal Bahar, Biba Kasabat Aidinas. This is as a result of what we are doing. Naturally, the world as it is, it is as it is. It will never change. This is the nature of Allah. But we are the cause of our problems. Okay, so the deviation from such kind of rules and regulations, the result is now we have problems. The sickness are for example, despair, deceit, enmity, despotism, disunity, and individualism. When we look at this, it happens all over, not among Muslims alone. It is just like my previous uh, sisters were discussing about the West. They are in the West, but they are like where they are, Colombia and Mexico. Are they from the West or they are from the, the East or from Muslim or they are nowhere to be found? Okay. Okay, now look at, when we look at this kind of these uh, six diseases, it is absence of positive thinking toward the self, toward myself as an individual. We have to look at, uh, uh, not to look at myself alone, I have to look at the entire humanity. I have to look at others as well, not to be too selfish. So like, when we look at this, the sickness has reached its peak now. Sorry, so to say. So everyone is having like the feeling of that agony. The darkest hour is close to the down. This is what we think 
might, might happen in some few maybe years to, to come. According to uh, the result of Said Nursi, he prescribed these sicknesses and he also have the medicine for it. So in order for us to like, take care of ourselves and have the proper um, positive attitude, we have to look at how he did that. He did this kind of diagnosis and treatment in the, maybe, shall I say, in 20th century or 19th century, but still, we are now maybe 21st century, but still we're still in the same kind of problem. So how do we get out, out of this kind of problem? The thing, um, Prof, uh, oh, sorry, but is a man suggested through the, the Quran and Sunnah, the way to solve this kind of problem, to have a solution to these problems. The first sickness is despair. According to the, 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 the According to what uh, Said Nursi wrote in his book, he said the Muslims are confronted with this kind of problem of despair. Both Muslim individuals and nation cannot live happily and successfully without faith in Islam. What we need is strong and firm faith in Islam. Like materialism without faith or decency, there is nothing that can make us pro prosper. We need to have faith first. We need to be decent first before we can. But when we have uh, greediness, we are in war which um, our, our, we are in war, we are trying, we are destroying our achievement by ourselves. So in order for Muslim to observe uh, the, the, the Muslim uh, observe the material progress, like as Muslim world, we are looking at those that have progress materially. And we look at ourselves as if, okay, we are left behind. Oh, we are forgotten. Oh, Allah has abandoned us. No, it's not like that. We forgot Allah and Allah abandoned us. So we have forgotten that we have Allah, we have faith as a result of what we are doing. So Allah has turned away from us as well. So he left us with our fizulumat. Uh, the absence of the uh, future, like we perceive that the future doesn't belong to us, but it belongs to us. We perceive that we are not progressing, but we have to change a bit, have positive thinking, and then we can progress and we can penetrate. So with this, uh, said Nursi process, pro, uh, prescribed the medicine for the first disease, which is hope. He said, we should have hope. If we believe in Allah, we should have hope in Allah. But the thing is our faith is low and our hope is also low. So what we need to do is have our faith very strong, then we have uh, faith in Allah, then we have hope in Allah. Um, so the moment we have the heart, the, the hope, Allah will give us like way out into our problems. We should trust Allah. Have trust in Allah. But our tawakkul is weak. That is why we are having such kind of a problem. So now the thing is, what we need to do is we have to have strong faith. We have to have hope in Allah. Then we have to proceed. We have to follow the footsteps of the Prophet And then we can progress, inshallah. The other sickness is uh, deceit. Deceit is the next sickness. Um, the second sickness, according to Said Nursi, is sickness uh, among contemporary Muslims is lack of truthfulness in social and political life. We are not honest, we are not truthful. We are uh, in between. Uh, we are neither here nor there. So we must have a place, no matter what. Uh, or, okay. The thing is that we have double standard in whatever we are doing. We are dishonest, we are visibly honest, invisibly dishonest. This is how we portray ourselves. We are like, are we monafic? I cannot tell us, call us monafic, but it's like, I don't know what to call us actually. We are just there in between. Okay, Nursi prescribed honesty and transparency. We need to be honest and transparent in whatever by we are doing. Because the Prophet ﷺ has set a way of life. We have the best way that we can follow. All these things are extracted from the Quran. 
according to the way Nursi wrote his Risala. Nursi is saying, oh my brothers in Umayyad Max, this is what he did years back. Oh my brothers, 40 to 50 years later, who formed their four million believers in the vast mosques of the world of Islam. Salvation is only to be found through faithfulness and honesty. The strongest chain which we to bound to salvation is honesty. We need to be honest. We need to be honest in order to prosper and get ourselves out of this kind of a problem. The next thing is sickness of enmity. We are supposed not to be enemies of anybody. Not to be enemies of anybody, not to ourselves, not to anybody as human. We are supposed to love everyone. The Prophet showed a good example. He lived a life whereby he, he called people to Islam, mostly through his character. Not by telling people come to combat. Mostly they converted to Islam because of his attitude toward them. Uh, I could remember after the battle of Hunain, I think, he gave a non-Muslim, his enemy, the person said, oh, I met someone whom I hate most, but now I love him. I met someone who doesn't fear poverty. The prophet gave him, he gave him, give out, love the person. Don't show him that you hate him. Show him that you love him. It is what we have in our heart that manifests outside. Just like the previous uh, discussion, it says like, just a smile. I smile at one person and the person smile at me. So even if he has some anger in his heart against me, I suppress it. There is no way he can harm me. I have to show him my good part, not the bad part, the bad side of my, or not the animalistic side of my, myself as, as human being. And we have to treat everyone fairly, fairly. We have to be fair to ourselves and fair to fellow humans, for example. There shouldn't be enmity. Like, what is happening now? Astaghfirullah. Um, if I look at the, the Muslim country, we have problem. Okay, what about even though I cannot say Muslim country alone, what about what is happening between America and North Korea now? What do you call it? If, what do we call it? North Korea and America, they have problem, am I right? They wanted to have the, the atomic, destroy everyone. Okay, where is the, the love there? That means we Muslims are lacking behind, we didn't show them the beauty of our religion. And we are supposed to say something here. We are supposed to voice out here. This is not about Islam, it is about humanity. It is all about humanity. We have to survive. We are here as servants of Allah. So we have to talk. We have to voice out. We don't want this. We want peace. If you want to have your enmity, please, no more destruction. Do it in a, another way around. There are ways of convincing others to love you, not by destroying them. The next uh, sickness is uh, disunity. We are actually disunited. But we are firak, 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 firak. I can't mention. I cannot mention. Apart from the geographical, what do I call it? We have also Shia, Sunni. In my country, we have uh, Sunni. We have Izala, Tariqa, Izala one, Izala two. We have Salafi one, Salafi two. All these kind of things. We don't need them. We are all under the banner of Islam. We have one Allah, we have one prophet, one, one book. Why the problems? The Prophet ﷺ, during his time, there were some, uh, what do you call it? Differences, like we are created differently. We have some differences among the companions. But still, still, they were united. We don't have the unity of purpose. We need to have unity of purpose. We have unity of purpose. Okay, I have one purpose, you have the same thing. Okay, forget about difference. We are different. We are, look at our fingers, we are not same. But we should look at what are we aiming at? What do we want to achieve? So here, uh, Sayyid Zaman, Abariyu Zaman, Nursi prescribe unity. This is the problem of disunity. Disunity is creating more problem. Saudi Arabia, uh, what do you call it? Inviting Yemen, killing Muslims. What do you do to yourself? You're destroying yourself by yourself. We have to think. We have to look at it from different angles and direction. In order for us to achieve this, to destroy or to, to, to cure this kind of disunity uh, disease, we have to unite. We have to have a unity of purpose. We should know that we are worshiping one Allah. We, are, we have one book, the Quran, and we have one prophet, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't need to look at all other things. We have to face this and um, prosper. The next sickness is despotism. But this Zaman Nursi pointed out the psychological damage inflicted by colonialism. Colonialism to me 
will not penetrate into us, into us. It penetrated into us as a result of materialistic behaviors. We left the actual teachings of the prophet, we embraced the wall, we embraced materialism, and as a result of that, we started to weaken down, and colonialism came in, and then the strong, uh, the strong rob, the strong rob is eaten by an, what do you call it? An, a small ant that eats some kind of thing, and it destroys it. Just when you hold it, that's, this is what happened to us. We left what we were supposed to be doing, and then at the end of the day, we were colonized. And then up to now, we are still colonized from our mind. Still, we are still colonized from our mind because we don't look at it from the other way around. We still follow, but we can change. If I can change myself, why should I face into that? Then I'll start changing myself, change my home, then from my, it goes on like that. We need to have our, change our mindset toward that. If we change a bit, it will change. Then we can look at it from the other way around. So said Nursi, like, I prescribe Islamic dignity. We have Islam. We need to have that faith that we have Islam. Like, for example, as a Muslim, there are certain places, like, so many things are happening. I'm from Islamic Studies uh, Department. Mm. When I mention I'm from Islamic Studies, they will say, mm, okay, I'm not supposed to study Islam, or Islam is nothing to be studied, or it's not, Islam is not relevant. So from that, we also have that in our mind, like, okay, I'm Muslim, I'm weak. Why should I be weak? I am the strongest. I have whatever I need. We have that. But we don't have that in our mind that we have this as a solution to a problem. We have to stay here. Yeah, I have to be proud I am a Muslim. Proud I am a Muslim to practice Islam as it is prescribed. Show the beauty of Islam. Show whoever I'm, I'm interacting with. Show him that I am a Muslim and the way I'm interacting with people is my religion. So, so that he can have like, oh, I'm interested. There are so many people in this conference that are not Muslim, but because of the way the Risala is written, he is portraying Islam, and people are interested. Oh, this is Islam. We are supposed to have it like practically, so that people will be interested in Islam, and this is our dignity is in Islam. Nothing more than that. Um, the next one is uh, sickness of individualism. Just like yesterday, uh, someone was mentioning about individualism in Bangladesh. We have that everywhere. I want to be the leader, so I have my own organization. I'm not going to follow you. Unite and prosper. No, I want to be the leader. This is politics. Okay, agree, there is politics. But do we have anything like a unity of purpose in that? What do you want to achieve? Maybe materialistic achievement. If it is materialistic achievement, then you need to have your own organization different from the other one. But if you have, like, um, you don't have, you don't mean materialistic progress or something like that. You must unite. You have to accept that person as your leader, and you have to be under him. You have leadership is leadership. A leader is a slave. If you really mean to be a leader, you are a slave. If you don't want to be a slave, then don't look for don't look for leadership. Real leadership is slavery, because you have to serve the people. You have to work for them, you have to take care of them, you have to do everything for them. But at the end of the day, you're looking for leadership because you need some material things. So you don't want anybody to lead you because you know yourself. You're not doing justice to yourself, neither to, to others. So we need to uh, have consultation. The cure here is consultation. Each country is divided, you know we are divided geographically, but we have to consult each other. We have to find a solution to our problems. We have problems all over. Muslims are being attacked all over. Muslims are being used to destroy Muslims by Muslims. They sell weapons to Muslims, go ahead and kill yourself because you don't love yourself, or because you are, I don't know, I don't want to call it. Your mind, your number six doesn't work properly. Okay, go ahead and kill yourself. Number six doesn't work, go ahead, buy a weapon and destroy yourself. Do we have that consultation among ourselves? Do we have that? Do we consult each other? Is there anything we should do about it in order to solve such kind of a problem? We need to do that. We need to consult each other. We need to have a dialogue. I look at this symposium as a one or like a one way or a path.
toward that. Because I'm coming from, I am Nigerian, coming from Malaysia. Okay, I don't care. It's not Nigeria, it's not Malaysia, it is Islam. Okay, finally. <laughs> finally, finally, these are the positive, positive action, positive thinking. I should think positively about myself, change myself, change my, my immediate environment, change my family, then it goes out to the larger society. These are the suggestions, the prescription given by Said Nursi in his Risala. He has done his work, he has finished. What is left now is for us to put it into practice so far as this one is concerned, I will start from myself, right? After that, it goes on to, to others, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.